Oh, hi. I'm Stacy. Stacy Moss. You can find me under Slightly Unbalanced on Facebook. And I am going to teach you all how to make a polymer clay cane. Oh, scratch. A polymer clay mandala using eye candy clay canes. Eye candy clay. See that? Eye candy clay. You can find her on Facebook. And she has her own Etsy shop. She is the clay queen. Okay. So I'm going to show you some of the canes I'll be using. And this is my first video, so bear with me. I think I need more wine. Ah, yum. All right, so let's sip in mandala, right? Sip and clip in mandala. This isn't a painting class. This is a polymer clay class. Anyways, let me show you the canes I'll be using in the project and what we're going to put it on. I'm going to flip the camera. So this is like a perfume tray. I found this at Goodwill. I'm not even going to spray paint it because it's already painted in, for what I would like it. And it's pretty big. The size of my mandala is going to be this big. And I've got room to move it around if I have to. Or make it a little bigger. So I got my circle that I just cut out from cardboard. Okay, and I found my center. If you can't find the center, go on Google it. Because I have to Google it every single time. I took some of my scrap clay to make the base of the mandala. I always have a base to make it stronger. I probably don't need one for this project, which indicates to me that I probably should just make a base color for it. And I'm not sure what color it's going to be. But these are the canes I was going to use. This is going to be my centerpiece. And these are going to be the canes I'm going to use to make the polymer clay mandala so with that said um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take my base clay and i'm going to because the the machine is only makes it so wide i need to do it like in two or three sets and then i burnish it together so I take this tool and I rub the lines together so that it sticks and then after you can put a texture on it if you want um, you can take some sandpaper and press it down all over the place that gives it a really nice texture or anything that would give it a very light texture nothing deep uh, nothing that's going to go through the clay to make it weaker in that spot so that's what I'm going to do, and uh, I'm going to get some clay base going instead of using this gray. I'll use that for another project. Oh, and in the meantime, I'm going to cut, after I get the base and the circle cut out, I'm going to slice up the canes, and I'm going to put them on, like, the flexible type cutting boards are really good to use for placing your canes on them because it comes off so easily and so I'm going to do some prepping and you could do some prepping in the meantime too so you can stop the video right here and do some prep hi <clears throat> so for my base color I used a bunch of brown some black you can even see it and I added some copper so now it's got a nice little glow to it it kind of will match the tray when I'm done and it won't deter from the from eye candy clay canes hang on a minute okay so now I'm going to set half of it down on my big huge tile I did this at a four I might actually have to go thinner than a four maybe a five I hate to go thinner, but I think a five might give me more clay to do the bottom half because I, I might run out of clay. So let's grind up a little bit. Let's go through the pasta machine at number five. 
Now, if you want, you can take a piece of your plastic or something, and after you get it down on the board, let me see if I can do this. Can you see that? After, okay, after we get it down on the board, I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit. Careful, I don't want it to fall and crash. Yeah. After we get it, we have to like make sure that there's like no air bubbles underneath it. So you can roll it out a little bit. Roll it to the edge. You can see like here's some air bubbles. We can press those out. And you can roll them out with your fingers just by rolling them out. Since I'm a little large and I'm going to need this extra, I'm going to cut it on the edge of my tile. So make sure you have your tiles big enough. So I do see quite a few air bubbles in the middle here. And I can try and push them out or I can roll them out and they sometimes they'll gather up. Not that the air bubbles on the bottom are going to do anything, but when you go to glue it down, you want it somewhat flat. Plus, the cellophane paper acts as a texture, too. When you crumple this up, you can give it a leather look. I can feel them moving underneath my fingers. And here I have a bunch more that I can do the other half. So what I'm going to do now is to make sure that I have enough and gobs of it. See, look at the texture on it. Can you see the texture? I don't know if you can see the texture. But anyways, it's there. So what I'm going to do is put my circle down here. And I am just going to take... A small blade or a blade or any kind of blade that you're using and draw around the circle halfway like so and then I like to have a straight edge to work with because it is quite a lot easier so we're just going to like this there and now I'm going to take all this scrap off and finish grinding it together to make the other half of the circle so before I cut the other half of the circle I take my wax paper and I take like a clay clay tool a real ceramic clay tool and I burnish the two edges together so that it's one solid piece. There might be an indent in the middle, but I'm okay with that. As, and there, obviously, it looks like there's going to be a line in the middle too because I used copper, and copper has some mica shifting going on. So maybe that'll be my center. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see. I know I've got a lot of air bubbles, so I'm going to try and get a lot of the air bubbles out by dragging it. Because I don't, I don't want to put roller dents in it, but I definitely don't want those air bubbles in there either. So I'm going to try and push them out. I guess the roller isn't necessarily as good as my fingers are. That's for sure. So, it's a rainy day here in Seattle, and I thought I'd get on this project. Because I have a show coming up. It was supposed to be in July, but now it's in August. And what better time to do a tutorial on iCandy Clay Canes 
on how to make a beautiful polymer clay mandala. Uh, she has such beautiful cane work that I just love using her canes because they're so pretty and they're so intricate and I get so many compliments on it. And when they see her canes, they're just, people are in awe. I tell them I'm not the fabric maker, I'm the quilter, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. It's my concept. Even though I didn't make the canes, it's my concept. Okay, so now that I'm at this position and I'm not going to worry about the, oh, I got a, I must have missed a line. Um, I, I use a lot of spit, sorry. I'm sure a lot of people use a lot of spit. Um, now I'm going to finish cutting my circle out. And I'm going to put it down a little bit further. Oh, I guess I can't. I might have a plastic one this size. I'm not 100% sure. But I'll just go with this. It'll probably, as it does, it does shrink up a little bit. cutting into the cardboard too so it's not the best circle but it was what I needed at the time Ooh. and then I have all this as scrap and it is absolutely a gorgeous coppery color yes I have an edge over here I've got to take care of Didn't see that, so I'll come over here and cut that off like so. There, that looks pretty good. At least I know it's going to fit my mandala or the tray because the tray is a little larger. The bottom is a little larger than this, so at least I know that's going to fit. I can put that away. Here's another example of eye candy clay canes. She's got the little honey bee and all this, except for like the yellow that I, and I use mica powders on my pieces too. And see here, I just used black and then I went on top with her canes. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slice all my pieces to go on here and we'll go from there. Oh, I got to get my thing back because I need to find my center. Alrighty. Now, because my circle seems a little wobbly, I'm going to try and use this tool. Although I need a thicker piece of cork to place it on. I don't think I have a piece of cork cut to do that. So what I can do is I can take a piece of clay. Put this on top. I'm going to have to find the hole first, but I don't want the other clay to stick to it, so. So I can poke a hole in here. You can try and use some kind of protractor or Sometimes you get circles in the mail. This is just to give it some substance so that I can actually cut. Okay, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> hey, you know, it's all a learning process, right? Right. I just got to find the center where I'm at, and there, I've got it. Anyways, so now I'm just going to run my thing that I bought. I think I bought, oh, see how off I am? Wow. So let's, I'm going to bring it in and make it a little smaller. Kind of 
because I want my circle to be a circle. And it's just skimming on the outside over there, but it looks good. All right, there. Now I've got my circle. I could have used that in the first place. But it did not cut all the way through. The wheel that I use is a pretty heavy wheel. So now I'm just going to trim it up. I was just making sure I was recording. Slow and steady. Although my husband thinks I am an expert with an X-Acto knife. So, that is why, yeah, like that. Okay, that's much better, and I'm much happier with that, absolutely. Much happier with that. So, if you have some kind of tool laying around that you can use to help you get a circle, normally I cut my circles, I have, like, this is a for instance, so, okay, so those cutting boards, oh, somebody got a bath. Those cutting, those flexible cutting boards make great circles. And see, here's another one. Um, they also have that plastic that you can buy from Joanne Fabrics or Michaels or whatever. Um, you can make a circle, right? You just fold your paper in half. You can use a protractor and you can cut and then you open it up and there's your circle. So I used old cutting boards that had paint and stuff on them. Let's see, the other kind of circles I have. Now this came from a box of candy, I'm sure. See, here's a heart. Sometimes uh, coffee filters are round. Sometimes vacuum cleaner filters are round. Anyways. Now I'm going to bring it down and say, okay, so now I'm going to prep all my canes and get those cut and laid out so that I can just lay down on my template, on my, on my brown copper colored polymer clay mandala. <laughs>